Welcome everyone, both friend and stranger, both old and new, to this time of Unitarian worship. My name is Diane Rutter and I'm the lay assistant here at Kingswood Meeting House in Hollywood in the West Midlands. My hope is that the words, prayers and hymns we share today will bring comfort, hope and an uplifting of the spirit. My thanks go to Peter Flower who makes all this possible. So let us now take a moment to pause as we ready ourselves for worship. At the beginning of every service here at Kingswood, we light a chalice candle, as do many Unitarians the world over. And we invite the divine within us and around us to gather in community of love. And our chalice lighting today are from Awakening the Soul by John C. Morgan. This candle that flickers, may it bring warmth and light. May the power of love from God and community be empowering. And may our prayers today join in a chorus with others. If you are a member of the Kingswood community or have been watching these YouTube services over the past few months, you'll know that the Reverend Ant Howe has gone on to Pastures New to serve our denomination by tutoring students who will hopefully serve as our ministers of the future. We wish him well for the new stage of his journey and we hope to see the fruits of his labours that he did here carry on in the life of this church. The chapel is now in the care of the committee and myself and we will endeavour to do our very best to serve you in the coming months. Now, although we cannot physically enter our place of worship as a congregation, let us metaphorically enter in the spirit with our hymn, Enter, Rejoice and Come In. My first reading for you today is from the book Earthbound by Brian Nelson. And Brian writes, spend a day at the seashore and you can watch the tide all day as they make tiny meaningless changes in the sand. Come back a season later and the changes won't seem so meaningless. A sandbar may have appeared or a whole section of beach may have been swept away. If, in the words of Gandhi, we must be the change we seek to create, then often we must work in small strokes. The big picture may not even come in clearly until we've been at it for a while. But tide after tide, nature is our ally in reminding us that there's nothing that can't be accomplished 
if we can find that strange combination of softness and inexorability that we admire in the ocean. So we come to a time of prayer. God of all compassion, we bring you the tears of our lives. Tears formed in the sorrows of loss and grief. Tears of pain and disability. Tears of failure, anger and frustration. Tears of worry and concern. Tears for all that was and will not be again. In calling out, in remembering before the eternal, we sanctify our tears and cries 
for they are holy. God of all joy, we offer you the laughter of our lives. We give thanks for the strength of smiles, of greeting and of parting, for twinkling eyes and faces wrinkled in recognition, for jokes and chuckles, for belly laughs and whoops of joy, for quiet elation and inner cheer. In sharing our laughter, in happy acknowledgement before the infinite, we sanctify our smiles and giggles, for they too are holy. Yes, we give thanks for the laughter and tears of life. We delight in sharing them with all creation, for they are holy, for our joys and our sorrows have formed our lives. In the busyness of our lives, may we attend to the ordinariness of our days, to know that they are holy, and so make our lives whole. Amen. Blessed be. Our second reading today is Credo by Will Hayes. Now, Unitarians don't subscribe to an all-encompassing creed or dogma, but some of our congregations do covenant as individual congregations. And we write what we personally believe. And Will Hayes writes of his own beliefs. I believe in human nature, in the divinity and the brotherhood of humankind. I believe in human love, that is the most beautiful thing in the universe, and that where love is, God is. I believe that the universe is planned for good, that an unseen tide helps every good cause. I believe in the immortality of every good deed and every true thought. I believe knowledge is the foundation of sympathy. I believe in the satisfaction of work well done and in the approval of those we love. I believe in growth, that all things flow and that no creed, religion or philosophy, no form of government or social order, no standard of beauty no ode of morals is final and perfect. I believe in sunshine, fresh air, friendship, calm sleep and beautiful thoughts. I believe in the awful mountains, the infinite stars and the wind blowing in from the sea. I believe in the hawthorn when it is white in all gentle things, and I stoop my ear to the silence of the earth. I believe in the forest and in the meadow and in the night in which the corn grows. I believe in a power in ourselves that makes for righteousness. I believe that the only way to reach the kingdom of heaven is to have the kingdom of heaven in our hearts. Our next hymn, Here I Stand, embodies for me the nature of our community here at Kingswood.
Earlier in the year, on one of the May bank holidays, some of us on the chapel WhatsApp group indulged in a flight of fancy, an imaginary trip to the seaside. It wasn't to a particular beach or seaside location, but a conjuring of all that we hold dear in our minds about our past trips to the seaside. How many of you can remember the wakes weeks when huge factories would shut down for a whole two weeks, mainly for the manual labourers? The Scots headed for Blackpool, the northwest of England headed for Wales, and it seems, so I'm told, that Hollywood and Withall headed for Weston. Now we've vowed that as soon as it's possible, there will be a chapel outing to the seaside, with picnics on the beach, strolls along the prom, ice creams in the sun, and quite possibly a sing-song on the way home. Well, our first reading today by Brian Nelson was about the action of the tides on the shoreline. In the piece prior to this, Brian writes about both our bodies and the planet being seven-tenths made up of water. And perhaps that's why we have such an affinity for the seaside and other bodies of water. One of my favourite Unitarian Universalist authors, Elizabeth Tarbox, writes often about the coast where she lived, about the detritus left behind by the tides and how she thought of life in terms of high tides and low tides and how we all go through such times in our lives. In that first reading from Brian, he speaks of the action of the sea in changing coastlines, how the seemingly small actions of the sea, day by day, week by week, month by month and year by year, can make such changes in our coastlines and how we can make changes in our lives in small daily strokes. I often use the phrase, I'm trying to change the world one cup of tea and a piece of cake at a time. And I believe it's small daily actions like this that can build up communities. One of the most spoken of desires I have heard during my visits and communications with you in the past few months is the hope that our Sunday morning services and our Tuesday coffee mornings will soon start again. Of how much these connections made week in, week out that these gatherings mean to you. And these are the times when change is effected, when solid foundations are built within our community. One of the many joys of these communications is the sharing of news, books, magazines, joys and sorrows. And one of my particular joys is the sharing of gardening magazines. I am lucky enough to be given old copies of Gardener's World, which I really enjoy. One of their columnists, Alan Titchmarsh, wrote in their November 2019 edition that, I am a firm believer in the ability of individuals to collectively make a difference. Now, Anne, Alan was talking about eating fruit and vegetables in due season and trying to reduce our carbon footprint and perhaps grow what we can for ourselves and that by doing this, we can collectively make a difference to the world. For me, this phrase equally applies to many areas of our lives, and particularly to chapel life. We each have our own individually held spiritual beliefs, but we come together as a worshipping community to collectively make a difference to ourselves and to others. Now, one of the basic tenets of humanity and church life is hospitality, the invitation to share food and company. And it's been very, very hard during lockdown 
to put aside our desire to share food and drink, to avoid handshakes and hugs. And it's been quite distressing at times. This has been one of those times when the sea hasn't changed slowly. But in the eye of a storm, it has taken great chunks out of our coastline. At first, we panicked. Remember the empty shells when loo roll and flour disappeared for a couple of months? How some people were angry that churches weren't open in their time of need. But slowly and gradually, things have calmed down. Loo roll and flour are now more or less readily available. And congregations have accepted the fact that they will have to worship differently, at least for the time being. And we can once again think of being hospitable. The ladies that lunch are once more finding their way to places where, socially distanced, they can once more share food and companionship. And other things have been rediscovered, such as when the dogs have knocked over my ever-growing pile of bedside books, and perhaps an old favourite that was buried at the bottom has come to light again. Many of you have decluttered or reorganised and found treasures among the detritus. It's been fascinating sharing these discoveries. I believe that like the sea, we will endure we will carry on by making small, gradual changes. Like Will Hayes, I believe in human love, that it is the most beautiful thing in the universe, and that where love is, God is also. That there are good deeds and true thoughts, that what we build for ourselves and for others, comes from within. Of course, we look forward to a time when we can worship together again in our much-loved building. But we are much more than just a building. I have seen that we are a people who care, who build friendships, who are hospitable, hospitable in their heart. People who can forge effective change for the good of their community. People who reach out to others in their time of need. Who support one another through daily life. People who endure. People who love. The big picture may not be clear now, but there is nothing that cannot be accomplished if we pull together. And I do so look forward to the day when we can board that sharabang and go to the seaside together, whatever our destination. Amen.
Well, our time together has ended now, and I wish you well for the coming week and leave you with the following benediction. May the deeds we do with our hands and the words we speak with our lips, the thoughts we think in our minds and the things we feel in our hearts be at all times worthy of the divine spirit within us. Amen.